Happy 2021. Welcome to our first episode of the Trading Bell Show. We're glad that you managed to join us. Well, on this first edition of the show, we shall be speaking to Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, the CEO of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. He'll be putting in motion what to expect in 2021. What are his predictions? 14 listed companies last year did announce they will be making profit dips. Will the turbulence continue or not? All this coming up shortly. But first, let's take a look at his profile. Geoffrey Otieno Odundo is the chief executive of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, PLC. Mr. Odundo, an accomplished investment banker, has been in the financial services sector for the last 26 years, 20 of which have been in the capital markets in various senior roles in asset management, corporate finance and securities trading. He is currently a director of the Central Depository and Settlement Corporation Limited, director of the NSC Clear Limited and a trustee of the NSC Fidelity Funds. He is a member of the Central Bank and Consolidative Forum for Domestic Debt Market and a council member of the Institute of Certified Investment Financial Analyst. Mr. Odundo is also a director of the Association of the Stock Exchanges of Africa and is a member of the Thomson Reuters Africa Customer Advisory Network. He holds a master's degree in strategic management and an undergraduate degree in mathematics and economics. He is also an advanced management program graduate from Strathmore Business School. Happy New Year and welcome to the show. Thank you, Abby. Nice Good. to be here. Looking bright and sharp as ever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Odundo, let's just begin by, of course, uh, we are right into the new year. It's January. A lot of expectations, a lot of optimism, a lot of hope. Does the same apply to the stock markets, which we did see over 14 listed companies did announce profit warnings? Is it going to be a better year or not? I don't know how to define 2020. Um, because we came to 2020 with a lot of optimism mm -hmm. that uh, this is going to be the, the fairest year for us because 2021 uh, is the year that a lot of activities take place in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, this is the pre-election year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the whole discussion around the referendum and, and all these matters. And so 2020 for us was really the year that we were hoping to accomplish a lot of things, yeah. especially from a trading performance. But as, um, as everybody uh, saw the, in March, the impact of COVID was mm -hmm. a total surprise sure. to every, con sure. every sector in the economy. And, and for us, it was a real impactful one mm -hmm. and um, caused a lot of um, <clears throat> change of thinking on how we were going to encounter the year. Mm -hmm. And so we've ridden the curve. We've, read, we've ridden it very well. I must say we've been fortunate to have invested heavily in our business continuity operations and sure. and all the aspects of our business to ensure that we're able to trade highly remotely mm -hmm. and uh, with that we must say that uh, we are sort of closing the year uh, well ahead of our expectations so we're happy with that right. and so 2021 for us is really the recovery i think um and i know we'll go a lot into discussing uh, companies. Yeah. Uh, a lot of companies have really have a total rethink of their business. Mm -hmm. Some have even changed their businesses. Uh, and so it's going to be the year of recovery. Mm -hmm. I think it's the year of real resilience of businesses. Uh, and um, as a market, we are positioning ourselves to really treat this as a very, very um, uh, normal year. So all our projections that it's going to be a pre-election year and hence we needed to have certain contingents. I think we're going to leave that up out. Mm -hmm. We're basically going to focus on business and really work very hard to ensure that the post-COVID recovery period is actually highly successful. All right. Interesting insights. And uh, Mr. Odundo, of course, uh, there are some of the best performing stocks mm. in 2020. Um, we've also seen some stock predictions of 2021. But from where you sit, uh, how will the market uh, perform right now that you're seeing? Uh, it's it's uh, back to school for many households, uh, back to work. We don't know whether the government will ease the restrictions further. Mm. But generally, uh, sitting in the cockpit <laughs> of the biggest exchange in East Africa, <laughs> yes. what, what is in the horizon really? 
I like the, what you've just said about the <laughs> cockpit. <laughs> I didn't know I sit in the, in the cockpit. Um, <clears throat> I think, first of all, Abby, I want to just say that a lot of the companies that are on the exchange um, have had a challenging year in their businesses. And I think they've, all, they've gone to what I consider an all-time low mm -hmm. of their performances. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you look at, as you rightly said, 14 profit warnings, this is not, it's not a surprise anyway. Sure. Because what we have is a very systemic mm. challenge mm -hmm. for the whole economy. So there's no one company who can attribute and say um, our business failed for any other reason. I think yeah. COVID has cut across Correct. all the sectors. But I think what has happened, um, these companies have totally remodeled their operations. Um, digitization and um, remote working and all this uh, IT innovation around business and products mm -hmm. has taken root. Probably there were, there were all these initiatives, but they were not taken to the front um, or given uh, high attention. Yeah. But you've had to look, give it high attention. All right. I mean, at the exchange itself, we have almost 95% uh, remote working mm -hmm. uh, today. Uh, we'd never envisage a situation where even our brokers would be working from home, but that has happened. So that, that total paradigm shift from a very uh, old way of working to a new way of working, a new way of our products uh, is, is, is really going to help companies propel to a new high. Mm -hmm. um, I see companies doing heavily, uh, saving heavily on costs. Um, I see them uh, enhancing their revenues through maybe uh, a lot of change of sales, sales strategies, more digitization, more use of, 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 of internet and media and, and all these kind of things. All I right. can tell you, I, I was a bit surprised the other day when I was told that today I don't have to actually go to a supermarket. Mm -hmm. I would just call one of these um, yeah. uh, farms that, that do this business. Um, E-commerce. E-commerce and, yeah. and, and, and I purchase everything and yeah. it's all delivered intact. Now, mm -hmm. look at that, online shopping. Mm -hmm something that we never decided would take root in Kenya is taking place. Sure. So there's going to be a lot of that change of dynamics. Mm -hmm. And so the companies that have repositioned themselves to take advantage of COVID to remodel businesses are going to do extremely well. But uh, speaking to our listed companies, I think everybody is extremely positive about 2021 yeah. and the post-COVID period. Um, I think first of all is to really applaud the government for uh, putting in place uh, restrictions that have ensured we are sort of mitigating the impact of COVID. Sure. It was a good reason to keep children away and mm -hmm. ourselves also to the stay home requirements. I'm pretty optimistic that farms are going to do well. They're definitely going to do better than where they are today. Sure. Because uh, this is, um, as if you look at the banks, they've done heavy provisionings mm -hmm. of loans, restructuring of loans. And so a lot of progress is going to happen in that front. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, very good uh, sentiments there, Mr. Dundo. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at the big picture, of course, uh, we did see uh, also some of the analysts coming out saying they are cautiously optimistic mm -hmm. because of the simple reason that a second wave might be in the offing. Of course, there's a new strain of the virus, but they're saying it's less deadly. And uh, the health authorities have also ensured that uh, they're putting the right measures in place. But um, from where you sit, uh, you did touch on a very important issue, that we are going into a pre-election season. Of course, there's still the medical crisis that is facing the country. Will we have the right uh, momentum to ride the tide, mm. especially now that we are seeing the the government is actually trying to actualize most of the projects that it had pledged because, of course, the elections are coming. We are likely to see more spending in uh, the uh, public projects. Uh, what, this, what does this portend, really, for the economy in terms of an uptick in economic activity? Will it be felt across the markets? Will it be felt to the common man? Hmm. <coughs> I think, first of all, is to say that um uh, as you rightly put, uh, there are a lot of moving parts mm -hmm. <laughs> in the economy. On one hand, government has to continue with their programs of infrastructure development, of um, providing social amenities to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. um, on the other part, we have got the issue of the upcoming elections and some of the political issues that are, 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 are taking place. But one thing I'm happy about, especially the political side of Kenya, we are a very, we've got a, I always say we've got a very strong political infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you can see it at work. Um, we, we have systems at work. 
uh, the legislature, the executive, there are ways of accountability, people speak their minds, yeah. and that kind of thing. And that's very important to investors. Mm -hmm. Investors want to come to a market where they are sure that political stability is, 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 is in place. Mm -hmm. uh, there are fears that there could be changing policies that surprise them. And I think that that's happened very well. So all these uh, issues that we are, we are ventilating as Kenyans, I think it's only good for us, even right. how to improve the constitution. I think the ventilation is a very, very important. Okay. And, and, that, and that's a good sign. Uh, it's a good vital sign for economic growth. So I think with that, 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 that's going on on one part. I'm not an expert in that, so I cannot <laughs> comment further than that. All right. But I, I do speak to a lot of investors, especially international investors. And um, they're very happy about Kenya's macros. They're happy about how we are, how we are um, managing our key um, key areas. First of all, we are a very diversified economy. Um, we are not dependent on um, on on uh, on oil and all these other um, specific mean, sectors. Yeah, yeah, sectors that mm -hmm. are are really causing swings in other economies. Mm -hmm. We are a very diversified economy. Um, agriculture is our base. We have got services now. That's becoming a key a key economic growth area. Manufacturing is is being looked at and, and also growing. Uh, I know tourism has been hit, but again, we are still a very attractive tourism destination. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I can tell you, the other day I was looking at Airbnb, mm -hmm. Airbnb listing, yeah. and uh, that share price has really rocketed. And on the back of uh, the vaccine being found, yeah. and on the back of recovery of the tourism sector, and mm -hmm. that can just give you an indication of what can happen in Kenya once uh, the vaccine starts being applied and, and, and tourists are coming back. All so right. I think we, we, we sort of have a more resilient economy. Um, our currency, of course, has lost ground, it's about 7%, but it really done well, I must say. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, as you know, uh, we are one of the free country with a free floating currency. We don't have exchange restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's been well. If you look at our import cover, I think we are very well cushioned. Mm -hmm. So um, all in all, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fairly good picture, and that's what investors are looking for. Mm -hmm. And so we s continuously see a uh, good inflow of capital, especially for the international markets. Uh, our market currently gets about 70% of our trading, 70% international, and that has been consistent. And, and that gives me a bit of encouragement, uh, because what that does, it also gives the local investors a bit of more po um, uh, confidence to also take part in the market. And uh, we've seen that happen in 2020. Uh, a lot of a lot of local investor confidence, but that notwithstanding, is not to say that we should throw caution to the wind. I think we still have to remain vigilant on making sure that our sectors are protected. Mm -hmm. Government incentive programs must continue where they can. I think it's going to be very important for com for government to come with policies that help companies come uh, access capital yeah. post recovery. Um, I think we were looking the other day at the economic post-recovery strategy report of the government and one of the things the government is saying, they want to look at the capital markets to look for alternative capital. Mm -hmm. Now we are unattractive. We, are, we actually are a very attractive source of alternative capital. Our pension fund sector, our life insurance sector, uh, who participate in the capital markets, have got good pools of capital that mm -hmm. need good products. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we're going to do in 2021 is really encourage listings, especially large corporate listings from the private sector and even the government. So the government can also unlock some of its valuable companies in the market and gain two things. One, access long-term affordable capital. And secondly, enhance and strengthen the governance of those companies. Mm -hmm. We have good test cases of companies that were listed, previously state corporations, and today are doing extremely well on the exchange. So there's a very good case for the government to raise close to 250 billion from the market. The international investors would be a bit jittery as we approach elections. Uh, what are the foreseeable risks, especially now that we're also seeing some transitions in some countries like in the US? Um, in a few weeks' time, we're going to see hopefully the inauguration <laughs> of uh, President Biden. Yeah. And uh, what, what do you see in your crystal ball, especially when, it look, when you look at the stability in the eyes of investors? Um, I think we, we've been able to backtest the market all the way to 2002 to see what does, what's the impact of elections on our market trading. And I can tell you it's, it's, not, it's not as high. Uh, I think 
investors are very um, uh, um, aware that for a country to continue in its life, it has to do elections every five years. Mm -hmm. What do you look for? You look for are these elections? Do they have an infrastructure to ensure free and fair elections, mm -hmm. and to ensure that there's no um, loss of um, an extended dispute period. Mm -hmm. And that's what countries look for. That's what investors look for. And I think Kenya has been very aware that um, we've had challenges and are looking at addressing these key concerns of mm -hmm. a fair election and um, a delayed or disputed periods. And, and I think that is positive as we, as we read in the papers mm -hmm. on what, what they're trying to do around it. But that understanding, um, even when even despite those factors not being addressed, they normally prize the political risk in their decisions. And political risk has never been top of the biggest risk. I think it's somewhere in the middle. What's the biggest risk for them is really their, the, the, the safety of their capital. Okay? Do you have, what is your history as a country in terms of allowing private sector to operate freely? Are you the sort of country that would want to allow private sector to come in and tomorrow come with policies mm -hmm. that nationalize assets or, or create situations that threaten that capital. And I think Kenya has not been there. Mm -hmm. So they're fairly confident about Kenya. So that's why they would even invest in a very uh, transitional election period. They mm -hmm. did that in uh, uh, 2013. And we didn't see a big capital flight. Mm -hmm. um, and now I know 2022 is another transition period we don't anticipate a major capital flight because the backwards they've always looked at what happened in the history yeah. and they're fairly confident that this will happen going forward. Some of the things we've done in this market to just make that happen, uh, they're happy to see progress mm -hmm. in the capital markets. They're happy to see new products. We have got six different categories of products today. The second market in Africa to bring our derivatives market. Mm -hmm. You can imagine, yeah. uh, after South Africa, mm -hmm. we are now having our exchange-traded funds, uh, the gold ETF, very active. Um, we have developed programs to support entry of SME companies into our platform. We are the only, one of the only markets in, that have got very good tax incentives for both investors because we don't have capital gains in tax. Mm -hmm. We don't have exchange controls. Yeah. So one of the few markets that has really looked at capital markets positively uh, to ensure that um, investors that feel, feel, make good money and feel safe and to ensure issuers are able to list companies. So um, I must say that the, the political risk, in my view, uh, will not be a very major concern. And really, we just need to focus more on showcasing Kenya. I think Kenyans need to, we just need to continuously sell ourselves loud and sell ourselves well mm -hmm. so that, that, so that the more and more investors can come. Because we are a bright spot right now in Africa and we, can, we should take advantage of that. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, speaking about being a bright spot, of course, uh, under your watch, we've seen uh, the number of listings rise. Um, the latest being Homeboys Entertainment, yeah. mm -hmm. a company that many Kenyans can identify with. And of course, the narrative right now is how can we further accelerate this and have more government companies listing, more privately family businesses listing. Uh, are there sufficient uh, plans in your master plan? Yeah. So we are now in the <coughs> end of our first year of our 2020-2024 strategic plan. Yeah. That is, uh, that's, that's very aspirational. We are, we, we are looking at focusing on growth of, of, of the market, increasing the market size. One of the aspirations we have as the NSC is to help our market achieve what you call an emerging market status. Right now we are a frontier market status country. Um, doing very well within that category, but it's a tier three. We want to go to tier two uh, and join South Africa there. Wow. Um, in that tier two, we then attract even a wider pool of emerging market investors. Mm -hmm. Right now we only attract frontier market investors. Sure. Who are normally the, like the third, mm -hmm. third pool of capital that you can access. Mm -hmm. Once you go to emerging status, that positions us as a very strong player in the market and attract new investors to come in. For that to happen, we, we've had to invest heavily in infrastructure improvements, in, in uh, our IT systems, in setting up a regulatory function at the exchange, mm -hmm. in strengthening the Capital Markets Authority, yeah. in looking at the Capital Markets Act, and improving all these things. And we've done very well. And I must applaud the Capital Markets Authority, who have been our, who are regulator, for really standing out and supporting us and the entire community to, 
to, to go to build in that direction. Mm -hmm. So with all the incentives in place, and even the National Treasury, the incentives in place, I think it's about Kenyans, companies, and, and, and entrepreneurs being bold and taking advantage of the market. Um, today, we are, we are really seeing um, our, our, inter our, 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 our economy is highly um, SME driven. And we've got a platform here that incubates them, that allows them. And you've seen Homeboys has become the first graduate of that program. Sure. And I can tell you, they're now positioned for growth. They've opened themselves to scrutiny. They're going to have uh, better governance in place, um, more confidence, more attraction, and more coverage from international investors. Mm -hmm. And sooner, sooner or later, they'll be able to raise capital pretty easily sure. through the market because of that openness. And so this incubator program we've put in place called Ibuka is an attractive opportunity for companies to, uh, to achieve that. And we're really hoping to see that pipeline grow um, and make more and more companies. We have positioned ourselves to attract more, not less than four new companies listing in this, in this particular segment next year. All right. And that's a bare minimum. Uh, but our bigger focus is going to be on the um, large corporates. Uh, there's no reason why um, companies cannot come and access capital markets. We've got, we've got bond programs. Even if you don't want to come and issue shares immediately, you can come and list a bond. And through the bond, you then become, you start operating like a listed company. And that helps you strengthen your governance structure, all aspects of your business, and even know how analysts mm -hmm. speak to you. Mm -hmm. And that will then help you sequentially issue ca equity capital. So that, that's an easy start. Right. And, and that's, that's a messaging we want to have for our corporate private companies. As we look at other aspects, you know, and, and, we're, and we're really selling the governance story. You know, one of the things that um, companies focus too much on is to raise capital. But you don't know the benefit of a good governance. Once you get your governance right, once it's open, once it's open to scrutiny, once you're able to account for your firm better, you get better trading volumes coming through, you get better market share, um, more people trust your products, more people trust your messaging, and uh, sooner or later, money then becomes cheaper for you to, to access. And that's the story we're selling to the private sector. Okay. Come to the market to help take your company to the next level. And so there's no reason why we can't see government listing more companies. If government lists more companies, it, it provides, um, it strengthens the, the, the it, or we, we call it, it catalyzes the market. It, it helps the market attractive and private sector companies. Mm -hmm. And that's why we believe large corporates that government has at the moment um, could raise, could release about 10 to 25 percent of their of their of their volumes here, mm -hmm. and that will help this market really move to the next level. If you looked at what happened between 2006 and uh, 2008, we got close to seven listings, with the icing of the cake being Safaricom in 2008. Yeah, but what happened when Safaricom came? When all these companies came, you saw many many private sector companies saying the market is right mm -hmm. because the valuations improved. That's true. And so there's a case for every company to fund their balance sheet using debt and equity. Yeah. We have also got debt and equity op op options here. We're not saying that don't go to the banks. Mm -hmm. It's important to have that mix. Yeah. But you have an opportunity. Because even the banks won't lend you if you don't have a sufficient equity capital. But if, you're, if your balance sheet is not equity cap mm -hmm. capitalized. You have to have a good base. You have to have a good base so that you can access debt. Mm -hmm. So there's a very big case for companies to raise money through the stock market. And we're really going to be out there uh, ed educating them and really encouraging them to come through. All right. Clearly, your work is cut out for you <laughs> in 2021. Yeah. And uh, finally, Jeff, uh, of course, uh, you've been very positive. I'm sure there's that one thing that keeps you awake at night, mm. especially looking at uh, a time of uncertainty that 2020 was. 2021, uh, what's your biggest fear so far and how do we navigate through it? The health crisis would still remain a really, really big fear, um, especially if, 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 we don't achieve, if, if we don't achieve what is set out for us. I think um, uh, it, has had a, it has had a major macro effect globally, and any further escalation of this, like now you see the, the new strain and all these kind of things, yeah. that causes some level of pullback. And so for, for us, that will still remain a challenge. Um, uh, and so we, we only hope that um, the, um, 
treatment programs can run as fast as we th as we thought. I was a bit worried when I saw the uh, in the U.S. Um, they had hoped to vaccinate um, over 100. I mean, they've already got 11 million vaccines, but only two million are vaccinated, which is a small conversion. And and so this, that's that's a problem that I think would would continuously affect our market. So All if right. if something like that doesn't stabilize, then there's nothing we can do. Right. We'll probably also just be in the same boat. Um, and for me, I think that's the most important thing we need to do now. How do we deal with COVID and any other virus strain that might might present itself? Yeah, I think it's very important that we invest heavily in, in our health infrastructure, in our research programs, in our um, uh, public health policies. I think those are important. I used to think public health um, was never that critical, but mm -hmm. I can tell you, this yeah. has been, this, what COVID has done has shown that investment in public health is extremely important. And oh, so right. that's, that's going to be a real um, uh, area, uh, area for us to keep, keep an eye on. All right. Sorry. Well put. Thank you so much, Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, yeah. for speaking to us in our first edition of The Trading Bell in 2021. Thank you. Well, very loaded sentiments there from the Chief Executive of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, giving us the lowdown of what to expect in 2021. And he's quite optimistic that this will be a better year compared to last year. Well, for me and the entire team, we wish you once again a happy 2021 and keep it locked on The Trading Bell Show, only on KTN News.